Okay, in this question, question number three, um, what we need to do is figure out the unknowns for angles A, B, and C, and also the unknown sides, side A, side B, side C. So to do this, um, what we're going to be using here is the sine law. And if you remember, in order, the sine law is just a ratio of the side over the angle. Okay, so if we're just looking at triangle one here and we're using the sine law, what we have is we have sine of angle A all over length A is equal to sine of angle B all over length B, which is also equal to sine of angle C all over length C. So we can use um, any one of these ratios equal to each other to figure out um, one of the missing sides. So let's look at how we, we do um, find side or angle B for sine B. So we know we have a side A and we also have angle A. So that gives us a complete ratio to start with. So we're going to have sine of 42 degrees all over 8.6. Okay, and we're trying to find angle B. So before we can find angle B, we have to figure out what sine B is. So sine B is going to be our unknown, and we do know the length of B, which is 12.4. So again, we'll just do a simple cross multiply here. We're going to have, um, well, actually what we want to do here is isolate sine B. So we'd actually, if we don't need to really cross multiply the 8.6, because we're going to end up dividing it back. But if we did it like the way we've done other questions here, we're going to have 12.4 times sine of 42 is equal to 8.6 times sine of B. Okay, now, but you can see at this point, what we need to do is divide out the 8.6 and essentially bring it back. So our equation here is just gonna give us sine B is equal to 12.4 times sine of 42 all over 8.6. So now sine B is going to give us a, a decimal. Okay, so if we work this through, we're going to see sine B is equal to 12 times the sine of 42 degrees divided by 8.6 is going to be equal to 0 0.9647. But what we're after is angle B. So we have to use something called the inverse sine. So on your calculator, that's going to be the second function of sine. Um, so in order to find angle B, Okay, we would write it out like this. We would use sine, but we use this thing, notation of sine inverse or sine minus one of, nine point, of 0.9647. And this is going to be what angle B is equal to. Okay, and then this is going to give us 74.8 degrees. So that gives us one of the missing angles here, 74.8. Um, and then we're asked to find angle C. So we could use the same ratio. We could use sine A over side A is equal to sine um, C over C. But the thing that we don't know though is we don't know um, what C is equal to, um, which is what we'd have to find, but we would need to know an angle for angle C. So how would we find angle C in this case um, or side C? All right, so we have to remember what our properties of triangles are. Triangles, okay, equals 180 degrees if we add up all their angles. So we would be able to figure out what angle C is by just going 180 minus the 42 minus the 74.8. Okay, if we subtract all those two terms, all those two, two terms together, we'll get 63.2 degrees for this as the ang missing angle and now we're in a position to use sine a over a equals sine c over c and we can use the same procedure in order to find um, side c okay and the other questions work um, the same way um, for triangle two we have the angle a and side a pair so therefore we can have side b and then we'll be able to find angle b because that's gonna be one of the missing unknowns. And then we can use our properties of angles, again, to figure out um, the angle C, and then that'll let us calculate side C. Okay, so that's a strategy of how you wanna use this equation. We're just use the sine law. Just write down what all the equivalencies are first, or know that triangles equal 180 degrees, and then just work out your question from there um, as you go along.